Hey guys and welcome back to the channel so this will be our first taste for 2024 and man what a year 2023 has been I don't know about you guys but it definitely had its challenges um, but we're gonna pack 2024 head on now we've got three paid AVs being tested today Kaspersky, Norton and Bitdefender uh, three of the biggest names um, out there so we're gonna test them all on default settings um, as per the um, description in the title so no max settings no customization basically installing them and leaving them as is and that's how we're going to test them now with security we're going to hop over to the um the settings uh, sorry i lost my track there okay security settings av we're going to leave it on optimal these are all the default settings so there are some of the settings not enabled means why it's default but as far as i know kaspersky does give quite good protection on default settings Okay, save browsing, pretty much default, don't change anything there. Uh, mail AV, default. Okay. So as you guys know, I'm just going to quickly go through the settings. Don't want to waste too much of the running time showing settings. You can always just slow down or pause the video if you want. Um, MC integration, it's there. Uh, KSN is enabled. Uh, firewall, pretty much default. Okay, weak settings are on, system watcher, select automatically, blah, blah, blah. And then um, intrusion or IPS, um, pretty much default settings. And I think that's that, self-defense is enabled. And then we always set case N is enabled. So for Norton, I'm gonna hop over to the settings. Gonna go to AV settings. And then uh, boot time protection. I think, oh sorry, that was, that's supposed to be on normal. Um, behavior protection is on automatic and that's about that we're going to apply that um, scan and risks these are all still automatic default script control okay firewall I normally don't touch the firewall in any case so that should all be on default settings uh, any spam that should also be on default Uh, exploit prevention that should also be on default um, I think it actually has yeah, used default let's rather do that okay so as you guys can see nothing really changed okay it seems like they could have changed a couple of things okay so that's that any spam exploit back and safe cam but we're not going to test safe cam so if we go to the advanced settings that's about that and yeah that's that for Norton we're going to hop over to Bitdefender now Bitdefender going to go to protection and our virus uh, settings advanced okay I'm going to reset it to default okay as you guys can see nothing changed so that's default settings uh, online uh, threat prevention okay that's default settings uh, vulnerability management uh, firewall So then the um, only exceptions that we obviously have for all three products is our scripts, but that's the only change that was made. But yeah, and everything else is on default. So let's get the protection quickly disabled, get the malware extracted, and then we can start the test. Okay, so all the nasties are now extracted. So we're not gonna do a, a super high sample count as I normally do, but I think it's more than enough for today. Um, we're going to do 847 samples, so quite significant lower, but I think this will still give us a good indication. Um, so, um, we obviously have RAS, we've got Fileless Malware, Office Documents, uh, Applications, MSIs, EXEs, ranging from ransomware to PUPs to um, other types of Trojans and things like that. 
now we're gonna just quickly make sure that these products are up to date um, Okay, and for all three VMs, I am running Proton VPN on all three of them. Um, the Kaspersky VPN only has 200 megabytes, so I'm not sure if that's actually going to be enough if it runs for a couple of hours and has to send things over the internet, so it might run out of data. And for some reason, the Bitdefender Free VPN does not want to connect. I keep saying that there's no internet connection, which is odd. So I'm just um, running Proton, Proton VPN for all three and obviously Norton doesn't have a VPN itself. Now it seems like Kaspersky is up to date, Bitdefender is still checking and then Norton's up to date. So let's quickly wait for Bitdefender and then we'll start the test. Okay, luckily that didn't take too long. So as you guys can see, Bitdefender is up to date. Now we're gonna enable the protection. Let's say resume on Bitdefender. We're just gonna hit the Bitdefender shield. Okay, Bitdefender is green, Kaspersky is green. Um, hopefully they don't start removing malware. Okay, enable auto protect. Okay, so Norton is happy. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first test, um, which will be the um, email test. So I'm just gonna get Outlook quickly open here. Okay, so I'm using the the, the, the um, default Outlook. I'm not going to use the new Outlook because I'm not sure if all the AVs are compatible with the new look of Outlook and things like that. So I'm just using the default um, Outlook. So I'm going to um, send a couple of emails with phishing links in them. Um, I'm not going to send any malicious attachments. Um, Okay, so I'm just gonna send a couple of emails with phishing links and then we're gonna see how they're gonna how they're gonna handle them. Okay, so Bitdefender does have the anti-spam plugin into Outlook, Kaspersky and Norton. Um, I suspect just scans the the um, email traffic coming from the applications, like any pop traffic or IMAP or exchange traffic. Um, okay, there should be four of them. Okay, so it only seems like we only received two so far. There's four emails, but nonetheless, we are gonna test these ones. So this is the phishing link. As you guys can see, the mails are not being detected um, at all. So we're gonna proceed by clicking on the phishing links. Okay, seems like these websites might have been taken down. I did actually test them before and they were actually opening up, but that's fine. Okay, so Kaspersky is blocking this one and Norton is blocking this one for dangerous website. So that is good to see. So luckily they did stop it on the browser level. Now let's hop over to Bitdefender and let's see what Bitdefender is going to do. This one should fail as well. Okay, so it's unavailable. Seems like they've taken that one down in the last couple of minutes actually. Okay, let's see what Bitdefender is going to do. Okay, so but the fender has blocked this one as well, so that's good to see. Um, but yeah, that's odd. I did actually send four emails, but only two has come through. Uh, something in junk now. Okay, but yeah, that's fine. So we 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 tested a couple of mails, so that's done and dusted. Um, now, um, before we start the test guys can see Kaspersky if you just quickly look at the virus total score that these machines are clean before we start so no cheating no giving anyone any types of favors um, okay so we're gonna oh 
that's actually the wrong one, sorry for that. Okay, so these are the malicious web pages. Okay, so we're gonna do Bitdefender. So this is for Bitdefender, if we can get both explorers. Okay, let's just... Okay, so as you guys can see, Bitdefender is also clean. Okay, now we're going to hop over to Kaspersky. Um, okay, so it says unavailable. I think it, I think that one might have been the same link I used for the email test. I'm not sure. So this one's a block. This one might have been might be removed. Removed. Block. 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 Okay, doesn't seem like we have any page that actually loaded. The, the other ones they seem to be have taken down. So that's good. Uh, continue downloading. Oh, there's a file here say keep okay, close that one now with Bitdefender we've got one miss for Bitdefender two miss three miss okay so I've got three missed for Bitdefender but it seems to be the same link so I'm not gonna count it as three so I'm just gonna count it as one it is the same link so let's be fair um, now we're going to hop over to Norton. Okay, so with Norton, we have one, two pages. Um, these ones were actually blocked by the other uh, vendors, so I'm going to count these ones. Um, although it does say suspended, but they were blocked initially. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, same one. Six, seven, okay, so it does seem like the majority of them actually did not go through. Um, it does say that this site is a warning, this is a non dangerous website, so I highly recommend it, but it is odd that it does not actually block it so I'm actually not sure why Norton is doing that but yeah as you guys can see the protection the plugging is there so yeah that was quite odd okay now to actually run the batch scrum <laughs> that I actually wanted to run okay I'm just gonna move it a little bit to the side Let's get bit defender going. Okay, so normally the test for bit defender does go fairly quickly. Kaspersky normally tends to take quite a while. Okay, so I'm not gonna do these disinfect and restarts now. Obviously, I'm gonna wait for the test to finish. For now, I'm just gonna use try to disinfect and then the last pop-up of disinfect, I'll then choose it to do so. For now, I'm just going to use the try to disinfect without restarting. Okay, so we're going to install this PCI Alp software driver nonsense. Crap that I definitely don't want on my machine. So let's execute the uh, library files as well. Let's minimize that one. Ok, 
Okay, so as you guys can see, we have a couple of uh, what, what I'm labeling as POPs. Are being um, installed. Okay, but as you guys can see, the same stuff opening for Kaspersky is opening up for Bitdefender and it seems for Norton as well. So it seems like they're all allowing these files to install. Uh, decline, please go away. Close. No, no advice, we're not testing you. Okay, so as you guys can see, I'm gonna have my hands full. Um, I, I'm suspecting that all these things are installing are legitimate apps, but then can be labeled maybe as PUAs or POPs. So I'm gonna attend to all of this. I'm gonna allow everything to run and install and things like that. So I'm gonna have fun with that. I've got my cup of coffee. I'm gonna put some background music on. I'm gonna attend to this. You guys know the routine, weird, funky, anything weird, I'll point it out to you guys but for now let me attend to this guys and then you can have a look at the results once the test is done okay guys so the malware has been executed now on the Kaspersky machine uh -oh. Let's just close these little pop-ups that we still have. Okay, so it seems like everything is closed. This one Excel document uh, doesn't want to close. It's also not closing on the um, Norton machine, so we'll just minimize it for now. Okay, so if we look at uh, what is running Okay, so as you guys can see, we've got uh, some threads running here. There seems to be duplicates. So a lot of these seems to actually be duplicates. We've got this GPT browser. And then we've got this one here, Flash Helper. Okay, that's that. Okay, so virus total, this is a Trojan as well. Only a handful of vendors are aware of this one, it seems. Or it could be a false positive. Only time will tell. Now, with this normal generic Trojan, we have a couple of vendors here. Um, Signet, Deep Instinct, ESET, Icarus, Malwarebytes, Microsoft, McAfee, and yeah. That's about that. So, on this one, a little bit more vendors. Um, So let's have a look at our startup items. Okay, startup items. Seems we've got this uh, Maple, AML Maple keyboard layout. I think this is this thing with the purple stuff around my um, mouse marker or, or the uh, cursor. And then, yeah, we've got Web um, Companion. And I would say that's about it. Oh, and then this um, AvantQuest message. So we have that as a startup item. Okay, so only the one file that downloaded during the website test. Documents are still intact. We do have these additional folders here. Um, pictures seems good, so no real issues there. Um, now if we hop over to Norton, so as you guys can see, we have a couple of things running here. Um, or there's that same one that's running on Kaspersky, but we've got this one. So let's maybe check this one out. Uh, and that seems to be that.
Okay, so this is a Trojan um, BWS. I would assume it's a password stealer, maybe something like that. Um, so we've got obviously ABG and Invest and Deep Insync and ESET and Google and Microsoft and Softforce and all these guys are aware of this. Let's have a look at our startup items. Okay, so we've got this weird startup item, seems to be broken. Then we've got Dark Adventures, also have quest message. Then we've got Fat Balls, nice. <laughs> Let's have a look at this one. And they're doing Microsoft Cash Files. Okay, yeah, that definitely doesn't look suspicious. Uh, Kings of Security, um, I did notice this um, on, um, I think, Bitterfinder as well. It seems like to be another another type of antivirus, uh, Kingsoft. Uh, but obviously it looks like everything's in Chinese or something. I don't mean to offend any Chinese people there. <laughs> but <laughs> it is difficult to distinguish between um, so this might look because there was a lot of pop-ups also that it wanted to remove malware which I did not allow it to do now we've got NetEase, Cloud Music um, then this Java runtime thing here update the roaming, monkeys of startup okay. and then we've got this um, VB script here but it seems to be broken and web companion and that's about it oh, um let's see no the user accounts are running so that's good i didn't check that on kaspersky but i don't think there's going to be downloads still the same documents still the same these are protected documents and then we've got the same folder that we have in kaspersky and pictures are good and they are protected so these little new green ticks um, is that new feature that Norton added with the ransomware protection uh, for the backup. Um, I think that's that. And then, oh, yeah, we didn't actually check programs. I forgot about it, uh, that. So we've got obviously all these um, uh, um, uh, flash players. Then we've got that uh, boost speed. A couple of nonsense here. File unlocker, GPT Chrome image like yo, there's a bunch of POPs here so all these weird little programs PC helper, slate digital, web, com web uh, companion I'm labeling all of that as POP crap now we've got Adobe Flash Player pretty much the same as Kaspersky so it could be that all these programs are actually legit but just yeah, a bunch of rubbish um, and you can see also all the desktop and icons um, but these are just normally as, as far as I know these are just like shortcuts for the games these are not things I think actually that installed um, yeah they're, they're just shortcuts so a lot of these things on the desktop are actually just shortcuts now let's hop over to our little red friend can't touch okay cool so it seems like we're not allowed to touch the VM now we've got a Debbie flash player but, but one less um, then uh, I must say this bit of the VM is also like extremely slow um, we've got this uh, acoustic elastic boost speed again also a CS manager flash center as well free file unlocker um, links and then um, yeah so but it looks a little bit less on the defender than compared to Norton and Kaspersky. Um, let me close that. Okay, so we have all these other pop ups here. Now let's look at what we have that's running. Let's start at the bottom. And uh, doesn't seem like we have much. Let's look at this one. Oh, there's no internet connection, so it won't look at it. Yeah, as you guys can see, the bit of the VM is like whoop, beyond slow. Um, oh, and then it also lost internet connection, so I'm not sure why. It seems like the Proton VPN is battling to connect, so there could be possible tampering with drivers or. Um, with the NIC interface drivers or something like that um, but yeah, but if we can access the internet but it doesn't seem like we have actually that much running because obviously these ones loaded while it had internet 
so compared to Norton and Kaspersky it seems like we've got less things that's running in memory that could be weird okay startup item we've got the startup item but it's broken when we are, again we've got fat balls um, and yeah and then web campaign so startup items not that bad at all so between the three if I can just uh, do it via memory I'm not sure why Outlook's opening um, it seems like the defender has done better than the other two um, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong but if I'm going according to what I've seen now it seems like we've got less things installed running in mo and, um, memory and less startup items but yeah our desktop is pretty colorful with all the shortcut nonsense so these are also things that you really don't want on your machine uh, let's look at downloads okay nothing there documents are good no additional folders like with Kaspersky and Norton gonna hop over to pictures yeah so our pic seems good as well um, but yeah I can definitely say the Bitdefender VM is definitely the slowest I'm not really sure why because there's less things running in memory so but yeah okay cool so that's that so um, I'm gonna do the disinfect and restart for um, Nord, uh, sorry for Kaspersky and uh, let's say apply and delete those bad boys with Norton I'm gonna do the restart now I'm gonna restart the defender normal and then once they are back up again, I'm going to restart. I'm um, sorry, I'm going to update them, and then hopefully, but Defender has internet connection, so I can do that. Otherwise, I'm just going to scan it, and then once Kaspersky is done with the disinfect, I'll then run a normal full scan. Uh, but yeah, once that is done, then I'll show you guys the results. Okay, guys, so let's quickly have a look at the test, and I. <laughs> <laughs> completely almost forgot about the test so the test has actually been done for a while so sorry for that it's the weekend so forgive me for that now um Kaspersky did do the um, advanced cleaning now it is um, also done obviously with the um, full scan so the full scan had detected these six threads and they have been deleted so um, but I do still see that it is still red so let's quickly go back I just want to close that yeah, let's see what the issues are 13 objects okay let's resolve them on Norton and it's gonna say delete archives so Norton did um, do that scan I just want to close all of this so all of this is obviously on the startup um, okay so while Kaspersky is doing that um, Bitdefender wants to restart, so we'll obviously we'll do that through the um, prompt. Let's just get this out of the way. Okay, let's just show all. Let's see where they are. So it seems like it's malware desktop. There's app data. And cool. Okay, cool. Never mind. The list is clean. So it seems like Kaspersky has happened. Uh, it's happy so it doesn't seem like it wants to restart again but we're obviously going to restart okay let's have a quick squeeze at what is still installed just do a refresh okay so we still have a couple of programs here that's installed um, they, um, they might be legitimate programs but obviously I'm just going to write them as POPs for this test Okay, so now with Bitdefender, we st obviously still have a couple of programs that is installed yet as well. Okay, on Kaspersky, I think maybe for Norton, let's just run these ones in the meantime. Okay, startup items, so we still have one, two startup items, and three startup items, so yeah, okay, st three startup items for Kaspersky for Bitdefender we have one, two, uh, three, three, 
four startup items, so one more for Bit Defender. Um, on the Kaspersky machine, uh, let's just quickly check. This thing on the mouse market is quite annoying. This uh, ENU thing, it's quite annoying. Um, so we still have one malware that's obviously starting up, still running on the system, but again, that might just be a PUP or something like that. And then we've got um, this program here as well. So it seems like we, uh, according to virus type, if, if we look at the virus type scores, seems like we might have two persistent threats still running on the system. We'll see after the reboot if they are still there. But it just depends on what type of threats these are. Could just be PUPs or something like that. Yeah, okay, good. So this one is obviously labeled as PUP or grayware. So not really something to worry about. You can just uninstall this. Then for this one seems to be a Trojan, uh, malicious, possible threat, malware, um, suspicious. So this one might be 50-50, might be malware, might not be malware. So we'll give um, Kaspersky the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so that's Kaspersky, but we do have three, two, two problems running there with high scores. Uh, with Pit Defender, uh, it's still scanning some of the files. There's a uh, low score. I didn't see any weird processes. So it seems like Bitdefender um, doesn't have the same programs running on it as what Kaspersky is running. Okay, let's have a quick squeeze at the startup items. Okay, um, oh, sorry, uh, the startup items we did check because I just wanted to check. Yeah, we don't have that same startup item. Um, that's that then. We're going to have a look at Norton. Okay, so Norton also have quite a couple of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, that was broken. 8, uh, 9, 10. So Norton has a little bit more startup items. Let's have a quick squeeze if there's anything still running. So just by looking at the process name and the score, just quickly, I don't really see anything yet. Okay, so it seems like Norton did very similar to Bitdefender. Um, Kaspersky has two, two threads running there that might be questionable. And programs that are installed for Norton um, seems fairly similar to Bitdefender Kaspersky, but I am maybe thinking that it is a little bit less than the other two. So Norton might have a little bit less programs installed. But yeah, you obviously would have to go and count them and see, okay, we can just close these two. Okay, let's quickly restart them. Bitdefender, I'll restart through the um, GUI. We're gonna update the third party opinion scanners and then we're gonna um, scan them and then we'll finalize the test. Okay, let's wrap this test up. So now let's look at the third party opinion results for Kaspersky. Now it seems like we've got three issues here still in um, local or in our documents. We've got that folder that we've um, seen and then it um, seems like we've got this file um, malware generic. Okay. So then we obviously got directly on the C drive and then that program files to one of the programs that we've seen that has installed. Now with Norton it seems like we only got two issues according to Hitman Pro. Um, also that same flash center and then we've got another one on the update the local uh, and then programs. Um, we're gonna hop over to Bitdefender. Seems like Bitdefender's got one issue, that same um, flash center. Now on um, MSI Soft, seems like we've got two issues and then versus Norton, we've got some um, six problems here. Now we've got update the roaming for Kaspersky. Um, is this whatever it is, Explorer. <laughs> and then we've got on the system um, we've got this, uh, what program is this? Yeah, it's a bit on the slow side. Okay, nonetheless, we've got two issues there. Just gonna close it. Um, Northern, we've got six problems. So it seems like we just got uh, PUPs really. Uh, and then one malware, which is a registry key entry. 
um, so that is an indication of persistentness so we've got some malware that will start up every time we're going to close that close that and then on the bit defender we've got two issues as well one registry key and then update the roaming uh, pup okay now with um, eset um, i did a full scan so we've got 51 issues versus 23 for norton so um, seems like we've got that program files um, so a couple of programs that installed we got a couple of issues uh, under update the local temp and then roaming so that will obviously start up with um, every user profile that you create it will then add it to that user, to that user profile um, so a couple of issues there what is it exactly roaming microsoft start menu blood and so okay cool so these are all the shortcuts that we saw on the desktop so um, yeah so it's more adware as um, he said is indicating so it's not really something to worry about um, it's just something that's annoying um, obviously he said does not like my <laughs> my script for the website and then some shortcuts again so not really that bad just p predominantly shortcuts it seems and then obviously that documents the same one that we've seen um, with the other scanners then we had an issue in memory um, and then I order start location but the majority except for the yeah that's my script but yeah seems like the majority of issues were the shortcuts on desktop you guys will see that desktop is a bit cleaner now on Norton we only had 23 problems um, same programs that also installed um, so more just um, PUPs and stuff like that as you guys can see also the description of the detection name um, then we add on the C drive this um, JavaScript um, Trojan and then also the shortcuts on the desktop we had a spy VB script here and then memory and auto start as well but yeah 50, 51 issues versus 23 just gonna close that and then for Bitdefender we've got 60 problems um, also issues on the desktop um, also a couple of programs that installed uh, phishing um, links um, in Edge um, that could be um, due to the website test that we did so um, ESET might be picking something up in the cache um, yeah so it is actually in the cache so that could have been part of the website test so just keep that in mind and then we've got local temp so just files in a temporary location not too not to really worry about then we've got a couple of programs installed roaming obviously all those shortcuts for the user profiles um shortcut shortcuts so yeah so it seems predominantly shortcut but also memory and auto start locations so the results are fairly fairly similar between these three products now if we're going to look at malware bytes we've got 54 versus <laughs> 316 now um, on Kaspersky just uh, program files obviously the stuff that installed and obviously malware bytes tends to list every single detection it picks up from a certain program as a detection so that's why malware bytes tends to have a high um, item count when you scan for malware versus some other products where they might group them together um, and then count that as one um, detection so we've got to update those all those shortcuts so these are shortcuts that no one wants, so all, all these vendors are picking them up, except um, Hitman Pro, a couple of registry keys, PUPs, malware, registry key, um, flash helper. So, yeah, not really, I'd say not really, really a train smash, but yeah, we have a couple of results. Norton, obviously, quite more. We have all these program files, program files, uh, program data, uh, still program data and yeah and then a couple of registry keys so a little bit more more on the registry key side for norton and uh, let's exit that out go back to bitdefender so bitdefender's got 251 detections um so uh, again obviously all these shortcuts um program data program data pc store so it's this program here at the top of the ai um so i would say that's why the quantity count seems a lot more with norton and bitdefender versus kaspersky 
it is as I've mentioned uh, Malwarebytes tends to every single thing it detects it will obviously list it as a detection but it can be multiple detections from a certain program so it lists every single entry it finds from that program as a um, separate detection so just keep that in mind the quantity might be more with Norton but Defender versus Kaspersky but it's just because Kaspersky um, didn't install one of the programs and then that could have triggered 20 detections on its own okay so we're going to close that okay while I'm at the Defender so again we've got a uh, couple of programs here um, So I've got programs there. And then we're gonna hop back to Norton. I'm just gonna close this. Okay, so a couple of things here for Norton as well. Um this is this other antivirus that I picked up that also showed some detections on Norton. I think the defender has it as well. Okay, let's see if there's anything we get running still according to P um to um, with PE. Okay, so we still have that flash helper that's running and yeah some unnecessary stuff here on Norton okay doesn't seem like we've got that PC helper that's running okay startup items for Kaspersky still one uh, two it says new but it seems to be broken so only one um, and then two startup items for Norton. We still have yeah, a couple of startup items here. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, and then we've got a edge here as well. A six, seven startup items versus two for Kaspersky. And then last but not least, we're going to look at the defender. Okay, so when we look at PE, it seems like Bitdefender has the least amount of stuff running in memory at this stage. And startup items 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4. So 2 for Kaspersky, 4 for Bitdefender, and I think it was what? 8 or 11 for Norton. Okay, so I think that's that, guys. Um, I think. Um, these three products did very very similar but the website test I think Kaspersky did a tad better in the website or Kaspersky and Norton I would say was pretty much a draw and then I would say Bitdefender came last with the website test but very very close with the malware test it's also very close they all got their own type of problems and they allowed the majority of the same things to, to install or create shortcuts on the desktop so it's very very similar but I would say maybe Kaspersky did a little bit better if you look at the third party opinion scanner results of what is left um, but if you look at the processes of what is running um, there but defender seems to be um, the one that's better off so all the stuff that was detected you can most probably just remove it but with third party opinion scanners so it's very very close between these three products i would say it's kind of a draw for me between kaspersky and bitdefender because like i said kaspersky did better in some aspects than bitdefender and then yet again bitdefender did better than kaspersky and if you weigh them out i would say it's very very similar um the only thing that i can give kaspersky um, some slack it is because it's so customizable the default settings there were a lot of settings that weren't enabled if we enable them we've seen previously with kaspersky um I would then most probably lean towards Kaspersky that would have done um, definitely better than, than Bitdefender if we enabled those those settings, if we tweaked it a bit and made it a little bit more aggressive, um, there's a good chance that some of this stuff might have not have actually been installed or dropped um, onto the system. So, But default versus default settings between Kaspersky and Bitdefender, it's really, really close. Um, Norton short um, short thereafter um, not bad at all also by, by, by Norton but we do have a couple of more issues 
um, but yet again also Norton on default settings so I would say kind of draw for me between Kaspersky and Bitdefender and then Norton thereafter so yeah let me know what you guys thought about the test I think it was pretty pretty close um, I hope you guys enjoyed the test let me know what test you guys want me to do I've got a list of tests that I want or that you guys request for but I'll go through the test to see which tests are um, feasible to do and um, is or is possible to do so let me know what other tests you guys have if you guys come up with new tests other vendors versus other vendors or different types of tests let me know but i hope you guys enjoyed the test um, it was informative it was a um, good challenge by these three products um, you can get any any one of these three products you should be in good hands but yeah maybe, maybe lean a little bit more towards kaspersky or bit defender but yeah the choice is yours thanks again guys for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys in the next test and thanks again for watching